Hello, everyone. Tony Costa here from Toronto Apologetics. Very glad that you could join us for this video. I'd like to remind you again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, it's very easy to do. Just go to that subscribe button underneath the video and click on that and you'll be automatically subscribed and you'll be notified when there's new videos that have been posted, uh, any uh, debates or, or interviews. Um, you'll be notified once you're subscribed. Also, ask that you like this video and that you share it with friends and with others. Uh, family and um, and those who you have a passion for, uh, particularly Muslims in this case, because our video today is going to deal with Islam. I want to talk to you about the so-called scientific um, miracles in the Quran. Uh, this is not new. This is actually an old uh, idea. Uh, if you are interested, I did a full-length video with uh, my uh, my friend and brother in Christ, Thaddeus Billman. I'm going to put a, a link in the description box. Uh, so we did a whole uh, a whole uh, video on the question of the miracles in uh, the Quran. And uh, some of those alleged scientific miracles in, in the Quran are going to be addressed in this uh, brief video. So uh, if you are, again, interested in a full length, a more fuller uh, treatment of the subject of the so-called scientific miracles of the Quran, I would ask that you uh, look at that video in the link. Now, uh, back in the back in the '90s, there was a very big, big push uh, to pass this idea around that uh, that the Quran was a book of science as well. That there were a lot of scientific miracles in the Quran. And therefore, that was being used by Muslims as proof that the Quran was the word of God. And therefore, how could a 7th century Arabian a caravan trader uh, named Muhammad, how would he know uh, of these so-called uh, scientific uh, miracles or scientific evidences um, that would not have been known until uh, many centuries later? And uh, the, the most prominent book at the time was the one on your left there, written by a uh, a, a doctor, a Muslim doctor, Maurice Bukai, and uh, the name of the book was The Bible, the Quran, and Science. And I remember back in 1992, uh, in my first debate uh, at the University of Toronto uh, with, um, it was either 1992 or 1993, with my debate with uh, Dr. Shibra Ali, uh, this book came up a lot. There was a lot of Muslims citing this book at the time. And this, again, was the early 90s, um, 1990s. And a lot of them were, were saying, hey, look, you know, the, the, there's scientific miracles in the Quran. Therefore, Islam is true. Uh, a Christian doctor by the name of Dr. William Campbell responded to uh, Dr. Bukai uh, in his book on the right there, the Quran and the Bible in the light of history and science. And so Dr. Campbell in that book actually refutes uh, much of what we find in Bukai's book. Uh, and what we find in these cases is that uh, a lot of these claims are exaggerated. Uh, a lot of them depend on English translations where they're uh, superimposing uh, certain words into the English translation of the Quran that are not in the Arabic text. And so um, this is how, in many respects, many Westerners simply simply took their word for it because they weren't familiar with the original Arabic language of the Quran. But anyway... Those were the two big books. The, the, the first one was uh, The Bible, the Quran, and Science by Maurice Bukai. And the second one, of course, was a response um, by Dr. William Campbell on that same question. And, and so um, what we want to do today, then, is we want to look at um, two videos, one of them advocating this idea of the scientific miracles in the Quran, and the other one is actually a response by Islamic Taoist um, Ali Dawa from England, from the United Kingdom. So let me start off by looking at the video. We're going to look at uh, four examples of the so-called miracles in the Quran. So let's take a look at uh, the this idea here of the Quran being scientific. So we'll take a look at uh, this one uh, first. And then I will make some commentary. Aside from our Holy Quran serving as a moral and spiritual guide with advice, commands, stories, and lessons, it also consists of historical and scientific discoveries. 
Such information was sent down from Allah and compiled into the Quran way before it was even discovered and confirmed to be a fact through scientific research. Such miracles of the Quran serve as evidence of God, His knowledge of all things, and proof of His divine word. We know that the Quran was brought down to us through the narration of the angel Gabriel to the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, piece by piece, until it was compiled after the prophet's passing in the seventh century. Despite it appearing in a time when science had little value, one can find several scientific facts in the Quran. Well, let me just pause and say that to say that science had little value, that's simply not true. Uh, I mean, we we do have we do have uh, a number of of scientists um, among the Greeks, in particular, um, who were trying to figure out the way the world works and the way things tick. We also have uh, the famous um, physician Galen, uh, who wrote books on medical science as well. He was a Greek writer uh, long before the Quran, uh, a pre-Islamic uh, Greek writer. And so to say that science was was not really taken seriously, it's, it's simply not true. Uh, there were indeed scientists uh, at, at the time, uh, and even uh, those who held to the the model of the universe based on uh, Ptolemy, the Ptolemaic model of the universe that comes from 150 AD, uh, the idea that the Earth was the center of the universe and that the sun and the planets uh, orbited uh, around the the Earth, uh, known as the Ptolemaic model. Um, based on the time that, that that model was designed, and then it would be later replaced in the 17th century with the heliocentric view of the universe, the sun being the middle, the center. Um, the fact that uh, Ptolemaeus, Claudius Ptolemaeus, the Greek astronomer, the fact that he could even um, mention the planets and, and, and their circular orbits around the Earth, as he thought at that time. But anyway, let's uh, continue listening. Sorry about that, folks. We just have uh, this video in particular is interrupted by commercials. So let me just uh, continue here. And I'll just back. Bang theory back in Quran. Number one, the Big Bang Theory in Quran. The theory of the origin of the universe is one of the most noteworthy scientific things mentioned in the Quran. Until 100 years ago, it was believed that the universe had no creator and has always existed. Uh, well, that's not true. Uh, the Jews believed, the Hebrews believed that there was a creator. Long, 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 long time before Islam came into the picture. And Christians believed that there was a creator to the universe. And we also know that there were philosophers uh, who believed in a creator of the universe. And in fact, in the New Testament, the book, in the letter to the Romans, chapter 1, Paul tells us that God made himself known through the, the created order and the human conscience. Uh, and so to say that uh, no one believed the universe was made by a creator is simply false. It's uh, certainly not true. Uh, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, um, right out of the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. But Albert Einstein, during his field equation study, challenged this belief when he presented the theory that the universe is an expanding force that's growing like a balloon. Later, a mathematician and Belgian priest proposed that this expansion must have begun from an initial and dense point. The Holy Book of the Quran, which came into existence centuries before the uncovering of the Big Bang Theory, details this idea. The text states that, Do not the disbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were a closed-up mass, Ratkin? Then we open them out. Quran 2131 The word Ratkin used in the text hints at darkness and closed-up mass. This is exactly how the universe must have looked before the Big Bang happened. Number 2. The Big Crunch Theory in Quran The Big Crunch Theory that predicts how the universe will end is yet another scientific thing the Quran details. The idea, based on Einstein's general relativity theory, talks about how the universe that began with the Big Bang will be eventually destroyed as a consequence. The Holy Quran mentions this incident in passage 21-105, where it reads, 
Remember the day when we shall roll up the heavens like the rolling up of written scrolls by a scribe. Well, that is not necessarily original to the Quran. The Bible talks about the heavens being rolled up like a scroll. Revelation chapter 6. At the very end of chapter 6, it talks about the heavens were rolled up as a scroll. And of course, 2 Peter 3 talks about the universe being destroyed by fire, that the world that now is is going to be destroyed by fire. The first one was by water, Noah's flood, and the second one, the present one, is going to be destroyed by fire. And that exactly comports to what cosmology says, that the, the universe is heading for a heat death. Things are going to burn up and burn out as well. And so about so 600 years before the Quran, the Bible was saying exactly that thing, that, that the earth would burn up with fire, 2 Peter 3, which comports with the, the view of the heat death of the universe, and the idea of the heavens being rolled up like a scroll. Uh, this seems to be clearly a copy or a, a borrowing from what the Christian scriptures were saying. And of course, uh, Psalm 102 also talks about how how uh, the Lord, uh, how God at the end will fold things up as a garment that He will clothe, that He will bring the universe to an end. This is so. This is not necessarily unprecedented. Number three, embryology in Quran. Embryology is a branch of biology concerned with the study of fertilization and embryo development. The central religious text at one point talks about embryology and states a significant scientific fact in the Quran. It says, we created man from an extract of clay. Then we made him as a drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into an alaka, blood clot. Then we made the alaka into a mudga. And the problem with this passage, of course, is the fact that it says that we made him as a drop, which refers to a drop of semen, and then it talks about placing that into a settlement firmly fixed. Um, nothing is said of the egg of the of the mother at all. What about the fertilization process where the egg is fertilized? And nothing is been, being said here about it. And then we made the drop into a blood clot. The embryo is not a blood clot. The word alaka there uh, also means uh, the idea of something that is a, is, is a clot. And then we made the alaka into a mudka. Um, and the way they work this around is they try to argue that this is embryology. And, and the problem with this is that there's 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 issues with the, the Quranic description of embryology and the formation of the embryo. And of course, this has already been answered by by many others. And uh, of course, in the video that that I have with uh, with Thaddeus Billman, um, this this is one issue I think we also touched on. Quran. 23, 12 to 14. Here, the word alaka can be defined as a leech, blood clot. Uh, a leech? Uh, well, <laughs> a leech, a blood clot. A, a leech is, is, is really grasping at straws here. The reason why they want to say leech is because if you look at an embryo, the picture of an embryo looks like it looks like a leech. Um, but this is very debatable. The, the idea here is something like a blood clot, something that is a blood clot that is attached. Um, so again, the, the 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 average Western reader is is simply going by what he's being told here. But um, there have been plenty of studies showing that that this is that the, the embryo is not a blood clot. The fertilized egg is not a blood clot. That's that's a major problem. Or something suspended in the air. According to science, a fetus gets nutrients and oxygen from the mother. Number four, oceanic division mentions. The meeting of two oceans is called conflux. When two seas meet, their waters retain individual properties like temperature, color, and density. At a point of conflux, one can see two different bodies of water running side by side. Even though this discovery is recent, the Holy Quran informs the readers about this phenomena in its 55, 19-20 passage. The scientific fact in Quran is stated as, He released the two seas meeting side by side. Between them is a barrier, so neither of them transgresses.
And the problem with that is that it's absolutely false. Number five. Absolutely Pain false. Receptors Let me just on. stop this here. For a long time, it was believed that the sense of feeling and pain is because just of the brain. Stop this. But a scientific study recently discovered that our skin features pain. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. I just went on a little bit there. Uh, so um, that is absolutely false. The idea of, of, the, of a barrier between the, the salt water and, and the fresh water and this is something that uh, Thaddeus um, uh, Billman, in in the interview that I had with him, he goes into great detail and and showing from oceanic geology um, how this is this is not even accurate the way Muslims present this. So, so the question is how does how do the how is it that salt water remains salt water and fresh water remains fresh water, and how is it that the two don't commingle? How is it that the two don't come together? And so the Quran seems to suggest that Allah put a barrier there. So again, watch that video. There's a there's an excellent section on that that particular question. So um, we have heard here um, that we have heard here that um, these miracles uh, are allegedly supposed to prove that the Quran is true. And you just heard a video where the uh, the person here, obviously, was trying to uh, use this argument to show that the Quran is a book that supports various miracles. So what we're going to do in the next uh, part here of uh, the video is we want to look at the... Muslim uh, apologist Ali Dawa, and we want to look at what he has to say on the so-called miracles of the Quran. And what you're going to find is that Ali Dawa is going to point out that the Quran, the so-called scientific miracles of the Quran, are debunked. They're absolute rubbish. That is to say, there are no Quranic scientific miracles. And so we're going to listen then to um, Ali Dawa from the United Kingdom, and he is going to talk about this topic. So let's listen to him and compare what Ali Dawa says here to what you just heard. So you had a, you had a video prom promoting this Islamic idea that the, there are miracles, scientific evidences in the Quran. Let's listen and see what Ali Dawa says about the so-called miracles in the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Okay, so guys, this is a quick video, inshallah. I didn't want to do a dedicated video to this. I was here with the brothers uh, filming for the podcast. And for one, I'm sat here. I'll quickly uh, touch up on this quickly because it's not really that important. So in the Andrew Tate video... It's actually very important uh, because the, this is an issue that Muslims were arguing uh, vehemently in the 1990s to promote Islam and to convert uh, Westerners. So this is quite important. That I did, I mentioned that the scientific miracles in the Quran got debunked. And for some odd reason, funnily enough, like as if they thought that it was a slip of the tongue, I'll repeat it again very carefully. The scientific miracles argument in the Quran got debunked. Did you catch that? So the scientific miracles in the Quran got debunked. So now you have a Muslim now, 2024, it could have been 2023 when he said this, or 2024. And now you've got a Muslim uh, apologist uh, now coming out and saying, the, the those miracles you Muslims keep talking about in the Quran, that the Quran proves all these scientific evidences, they're debunked. They're over. Stop using them. So one side says, oh, we got scientific miracles. Another side is saying, stop using them. They've been debunked. And why are they debunked? Because of the pressure of Western academia, because Western academia has been pushing and pressing back against this. And so when the evidence is provided, when the evidence is put out there, that shows that the so-called so alleged miracles are not miracles in the Quran after all. So let's keep listening. Yeah, I hope my tajweed was on point. So when I said this, a lot of... Um, Islamophobes were celebrating as if I was like, oh my gosh, like this video. Uh, Islamophobes. What is an Islamophobe? Um, is, Ali <clears throat> is Ali Dawa a Christophobe? 
does he uh, promote Christophobia? What is an Islamophobe? So to disagree with Islam is, is to be Islamophobic? No. To disagree is a, a right. It is a, it is a God-given right of freedom of speech, which includes the freedom to disagree. It doesn't make you a phobic person uh, or a hateful person. This video is going to be me apologizing and no, listen, it got debunked. Now, let's give some context for some Muslims so they can understand. For example, and I'll tell you where this comes from. And you know why many people in the Duat, many Duat, YouTubers, my colleagues, that, like brothers that I work with, didn't do a video. Why did you say that? Because they know it as well. In what sense? Brothers and sisters, I was having a debate with a guy called Phil. Yes? This guy is a scientist or whatever he is, for that matter. I was debating with him. And I can remember this very clearly a couple of years ago. And I took an eye in the Quran, which I am not qualified to do, which is give it, it's like doing tafsir. So there was an eye in the Quran which says that there are seven heavens. So me, I was claiming, because of this whole scientific narrative, that this is talking about the ozone layer. Number one, it is haram for me to do that. Why? Because how can I give an understanding to the Quran, the ayah, with no qualifications? And who of who have ever said that this is the ozone layer? Then I was having a debate with this atheist guy and trying to tell him that there's seven ozone layers. And he was saying to me, no, my friend, there are six ozone layers. And I was saying seven. He was saying six, seven, six, seven, six. And we said, let's go to the NASA page. So we went to the NASA page. And in the NASA page, guess what? It said the argument was apparently from their recent findings, whatever it may be. This probably changed. Uh, and this is my whole point of the video, yeah? Science changes. It said that there is five ozone layers. So I looked at him, he looked at me, and I was thinking, I'm saying seven, you're saying six, NASA is saying five. That is where the penny dropped for me. You know why? There you go. There you go. So when they say ayah, by the way, folks, ayah means a verse in the Quran. So the Arabic word ayah means a verse, and the word ayat in Arabic is the plural, which means verses. So just to let you know, when he says an ayah, in the Quran, he's referring to a verse in the Quran. Let's keep listening. Because we are making claims about the Quran and specific verses. And because we was, you know, not myself, I would say, but a lot of people were very insecure because of the scientific, you know, um, discoveries or whatever it may be. And we was trying to fit the scientific narrative into the Quran. which was Very good. So they're trying to fit the scientific narrative into the Quran, which is exactly what they were doing in the 90s. And even though they were being called out, and I remember calling out Muslims saying, you are reading into the Quran what's not there. You're imposing, uh, in, in the English translation, words that are not in the Arabic. And, and so, and so for, for, the past, um, for the past 20 years, uh, 30 years or so, um, we've been calling this out. We've been saying, no, that is not what the Quran is actually saying. Uh, but, and, and Christians are guilty of this too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you have Christians... Uh, who will tell you that the invention of the automobile <laughs> is mentioned in the book of Nahum, in the Old Testament book of Nahum, where, where it talks about how their chariots would 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 run through the streets uh, like fire and 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 so forth and and bristling. And they would say, well, the fire refers to the exhaust of, of an automobile. No, 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 no. It's not talking about an automobile. It's not talking about the invention uh, of a car. It's not talking about that. Um and and when it says in Isaiah that God would, would protect uh, Israel uh, as birds flying over, oh, that refers to the aircraft and the Air Force and refers to jets and so forth. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. So so some Christians have been guilty of, of reading into the Bible things that are not there. So Christians are just as guilty when they're trying to put modern-day inventions or, 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 or scientific inventions into the Bible that is not there. So we're not saying that the Bible is unscientific. We're simply saying that there's nothing in science, and I'm talking about science, data, evidence. I'm not talking about theory here. There, there is there is information in science that is confirmed in Scripture. That is to say, the Bible doesn't say anything that violates what we we know as science. And so when when people say, well, well, the Bible talks about sunrise and sunset, and we all know that. The earth rotates around the sun. It's not the sun. The biblical writers thought the sun went around the earth. So goes the argument. Well, we still use that language today. We still talk about sunrise happening at 6.45 a.m. or sunset will happen at, depending on which hemisphere you are on the planet, uh, sunset will be 8.30 or 8.10 and so forth and so on. Why do we use sunrise, sunset if we know the, the sun does not go around the earth? Well, because this is part of what we call phenomenological language. 
from our perspective, it looks like the sun is setting uh, in the horizon, and it looks like the sun is rising in the east. And so from our perspective, we call it sunrise, sunset. And so when the Bible calls these, these phenomena sunrise and sunset, it's not doing anything different than what we do. A and so there's a difference between saying that the Bible does not contradict any known scientific law. There's no contradiction with that, but then trying to read things into the Bible and say, well, cars were predicted here and, and, the, and the shuttle was, the space shuttle was here. No, 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 no. And Muslims have been as guilty as Christians have in, in that respect. It was a big mistake because it's as if as good as we were making science the, um, the guideline for the Quran to be accepted. This is nonsense. Yeah, we take the Quran, not science. To hell with science. Science changes tomorrow, today. Uh, to, <laughs> to hell with science. So, so uh, Maurice Bukai, when he wrote the book of the Bible, the Quran, and 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 science, uh, yeah, um, yeah, Ali Dawa has just thrown that book right in the trash. Uh, to hell with science. Uh, we don't need science. Um, and I understand where Ali Dawa was coming from. He's, he's saying that we should not use science which is which is um uh, unstable at times in terms of science is based on observation and new evidence and new research if new research um if new research comes along and it refutes the, the the common view now well we change it and and he's correct he's correct on that now that doesn't mean science is invalidated it simply means that science is always in flux that it is it is growing it is it is moving forward it's looking at research and so forth and so what he's saying is, why are you using uh, an unsteady um, uh, tool here that that changes and is in flux? Why use that to prove the Quran is the word of God? And again, some Christians do the same thing by trying to show that, well, the, Quran, the Bible has to conform with science. And we need to be careful because, once again, science is from the human vantage point. And, and therefore, science, the scientific method, needs observation. It needs data. It needs information, it needs experimentation, and then, of course, a conclusion. They talk about the Big Bang. Now there's new uh, studies or whatever, new findings that there was no Big Bang. So my point is what? You cannot come and say this, were, this verse here is a scientific miracle, is a scientific fact. Why? Not because the Quran is... Well, again, the, uh, Ali Dawid there is going completely against what we just saw in that video, where the video says, this verse is talking about embryology. This verse is talking about the conflicts of, of the of the, of the the fresh waters and, and the salt water. And, and this verse uh, is talking about the Big Bang. Um, and now he's saying, no, forget it. No, no, throw it out. No, we don't need that. That is wrong because science changes, number one. Number two, who told you that verse in the Quran is talking about what you're ascribing to it? Absolutely right. He's absolutely right. Who told you that that verse in the Quran is talking about embryology? Who told you it's talking about an embryo? Who's tell, tell, told you it's talking about a zygote? Well, people that really want to um, confirm that, that the Quran is some special book, and therefore they will go to those extents. They will go to those extents. Simple as that. So that's why I repeat it one more time for my fans, those Islamophobes. The scientific argument, the scientific miracles in the Quran is debunked. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And so, folks, when you're talking to your Muslim friends, tell them that according to Ali Dawa, the scientific miracles, the alleged scientific miracles in the Quran have been debunked, as he said. And he's right. I knew that 30 years ago. It's no surprise that Ali Dawa is now confirming and admitting what has always been known. And we as Muslims, guess what? It doesn't bother us to the least. You know why? Because Alhamdulillah, you know what's very interesting? People are flocking to Islam. Isn't that crazy? All you Murtads, you ex-Muslims, all you hostile Christians, Islamophobes, not all of you, Zionists, some of you are Jews, some of you Hindus, all of you guys have got your tails between your legs walking away. Really? Wow. Christians are walking away. Um, is that why at Speaker's Corner at Hyde Park in London, in England, um, Christians are out there in the park challenging Muslims? Um, people like uh, Bob the Builder and uh, Hatun Tash, uh, Jay Smith, the work that he used to do there. 
uh, and the various other ministries that are taking place uh, at Hyde Park, and uh, the 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 converts from Islam to Christianity, Muslims leaving Islam for Christianity, due in part to those ministries. Really, we're running away with tails behind or tails between our legs? No, no. It's Ali Dawa in some videos is running away from the Christian apologists and and many others. Uh, and Islamophobes again. Um, is Ali Dawi a, a Christophobe? Because he hates Christianity. Is he Christophobic? Um, and he goes on and, and mentions the, the Murtads, that is the apostates in Islam and so forth. Um, we're not running, uh, Ali. We're, we're here to stay. And we're here to challenge. And we're here to say thank you for confirming what we've always said. You're now coming around and saying exactly what Christians have been saying, at least for 30 years since this claim has been circulating among Muslims. And you know what's interesting? People are coming to Islam because of its intolerance. What happened to, you know, me saying that, and we are proud of that. And I'll repeat it again. Yes, we are proud of that. Yes, and you know what I'm talking about. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, there is that capital punishment. We are proud of that. Capital punishment. In another video, Ali Dawa said that. He said, what about that? Uh, he made that very clear. His, his voice was a little high pitched there <laughs> when he made that claim. Um, but that's that's another video for another discussion. Alhamdulillah, every legislation in the Quran and the Sunnah, we are proud of that. And I know you're watching this and biting your tongue out of your fingers out of rage, like Allah says in the Quran, die in your rage. Millions and thousands of people are coming to Islam. Alhamdulillah. Die in your rage. We're not raging. Um, millions of people are coming to Islam. Yeah, that's 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 not what the stats are showing. That's not what the stats are showing. A lot of Muslim imams are concerned about how many young men are leaving Islam. What happened to all your arguments of Islam mistreats women? Islam says this punishment for ex-Muslims. Islam says da da da. Oh, look, look how bad it is. People are still flocking to Islam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. It's as simple as that. And we praise our Lord. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when people are coming in multitudes to Islam, Alhamdulillah, we praise all your efforts that you did for 10 years. It's all gone in the bin, not even the rest. No, actually, no, it's not gone in the bin because there's a, a, there is a, a huge influx of Muslims coming to know Christ. I've met many everywhere I travel in the world, everywhere. Doesn't matter which continent I go to, uh, to speak at churches or conference or mission, everywhere I go, ex-Muslims. I keep meeting ex-Muslims. Um, many of them. And, and so this idea that that people are just coming in droves to Islam, I think there's some propaganda going on here because uh, I know personally from the ministry work that is going on in England at Hyde Park in London, I know for a fact Muslims, many of them are coming to Christ. Recycle bin. You can't even recycle it. It's gone to the waste. Like poo. It's gone. Halas. People are flocking to Islam. So me seeing the argument of science and miracles debunked, it is debunked. And guess what? We don't even need it. There you go. So remember, for the record, folks, the scientific miracles, the alleged scientific miracles in the Quran are debunked, and we don't need it. Remember that. Thank you again, Ali, for admitting, once again, what we've always known. We don't even need it, alhamdulillah. So an exam and an and, and nasiya to give to all of you guys, alhamdulillah, is very simple. You do not read into the Quran. We do not make that mistake by reading and this verse means that. Now, is there certain facts, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the depths of the ocean, where when if you put your hand up, there are layers and layers of darkness. We can say, wow, that is very interesting because now recent discoveries do show that. So I'm not saying totally you can't use it but i'm saying to use science as a yardstick this is wrong the quran is our yardstick we don't say because the science changes one day it says this next day it says that it's as simple as that so that's the reason why we say there are certain things in the quran which is like how could a man know this if it was from a man not from god who went to the depths of the ocean yes thousands of meters down to know that there's layers and layers of darkness that is my point so once again, for all my fans out there, the Islamophobes, the cowards, the...
<laughs> the Islamophobes and the, and the cowards. Notice how he uses that political term, uh, Islamophobes. So, so notice that he says, oh, it, it, scientific American debunk. But there's this one verse in the Quran, and it talks about these layers uh, in, in, of darkness in the ocean. And yet, when we bring up pre-Islamic uh, uh, scientists who are saying the same thing, so, so for example, we know the Greek uh, physician Galen talked about the various layers uh, of the of the uh, uterus and the child in, in the amniotic sac and, and so forth, those layers or barriers. People say, well, well how would Galen have known that? Very simple, by, by doing what many people do today in anatomy, and that is by dissecting cadavers and <clears throat> by observing uh, and, and, and looking at the organs inside the body and so forth. Um, so, so once again, a lot of the ideas that we hear today propagated by 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 Muslims and and dare I say by Christophobes like Ali Dawa, um, whenever we bring the fact that that these are not new ideas that these ideas were being argued by the ancients, uh, they simply say, well, uh, uh, well, they they they'll say something akin to, well, no, you're lying, you're 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 just making that up, and and that's not true, and and, and so forth. Um, so you can't have it both ways. So you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too. But the point that Dawa Ali Dawa keeps making is it's debunked. It's debunked. Little weasels, alhamdulillah, Islam is growing. Yes? Okay, for those who, like Muhammad Ijab says, who are intellectually molested, yes, it is debunked and we don't need it. Alhamdulillah, Islam doesn't need anything. And people are flocking to Islam. Our Dawa videos, people are accepting Islam left, right, center. So die in your rage. Die in your rage. <laughs> what a poet. Um, uh, people are flocking to Islam again. Um, stats are showing otherwise, folks. The evidence is showing otherwise. And that's because just like they're now changing their tune on the scientific miracles, uh, they're changing their tune on the preservation of the Quran. Um, they're now acknowledging textual variants, different readings in the in the Quranic text, uh, and why? Why is that? Well, before the internet age, when when I was talking about textual variants in the Quran in the early '90s and debating on those issues, um, the only way to prove that or disprove that was to go to a local library and research the books and photocopy pages and so forth. Now, with the advent of the internet and the the World Wide Web. Um, this information is accessible within seconds by the press of a button. That was not possible in the early 90s. I'd have to quote from, from books and, and name the authors, the authorities, and so forth. Now you can bring this up on online. You can look at the Hadith. You can look at the Quran. You can look at the original Arabic. You can look at academic articles and essays. And that is what has pushed back against Islam. You can't deceive the person in the mosque anymore by saying the Quran is the same Quran Muhammad had. It's never been changed. And then when you look at the actual evidence and look at the manuscripts of the Quran and look at the textual differences, you begin to realize that you've been lied to. And so what we're hearing here is really propaganda. It's just propaganda. That's all I wanted to say, alhamdulillah. And brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you guys, inshallah. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, there you have it. There you have it, folks. Um, Ali Dawa coming out and admitting what we have always known. So, in other words, we were right along. Can we get some apologies for uh, branding us as hate mongers and, and ignorant and uh, distorting the Quran and so forth? No, I don't think those apologies are forthcoming. But the point is this, folks. He talks about how how science is always changing and it's never it's never fixed. It sounds a lot like Islam today. It sounds a lot like the Quran. It's always changing. The narrative is changing. There's holes in the narrative. There's constant flux within Islam. First miracles are in the Quran. Now they're not in the Quran. Uh, Alexander the Great is mentioned in Surah 18. Well, no, it's not really Alexander the Great. So there's always these constant changes. I remember again in the early '90s that the, even the moon landing, uh, uh, the Apollo uh, in the 1960s, they were saying that that was predicted in the Quran. But then other Muslims says, "Well, no, it couldn't have been predicted in the Quran because the Quran says man cannot 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 penetrate the atmosphere and, and go out into the heavens and so forth." So 
you you have this flux, this change, constant change. And yet the very thing they claim science is 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 in flux, the Quran is in flux in Islamic theology. So folks, I hope that you enjoyed this brief analysis, this video. Uh, we encourage you to like this video, share it, and also encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, everyone. And uh, we look forward to having you again on a future episode of Toronto Apologetics. Take care. God bless you all. Bye for now.